Aspirin is a medication that's going to be essential for you to know regardless of what area of the hospital you work or what area of nursing you work. You've most likely come into contact with aspirin at some point in your life and you understand some of the risks and things associated with it. So generic name is aspirin. Trade name is going to be like Bayer or something like that that you're going to find just in the in the over-the-counter medications. But we do get it in the hospital sometimes for various disorders. So indication for use is going to be like rheumatoid arthritis, osteoarthritis, ischemic stroke, MI prophylaxis. So you can see it's, it's dealing with these inflammatory disorders, these ischemic disorders, as well as we can give it uh, for fever uh, re reduction as well. Its action is what it does is it really inhibits the production of prostaglandins. And what these prostaglandins do in our body is they actually lead to fever and they lead to inflammation. So if we can inhibit the production of these prostaglandins, that gives us the ability to reduce the fever and decrease the inflammation. Okay, another thing that it does is it decreases platelet aggregation. Okay, so it stops these platelets from aggregating, from combining together and clotting. Okay, and this leads to a decrease in ischemic diseases. So, for example, like we said with ischemic stroke, if we have an ischemic stroke, a lot of times after the stroke and in the recovery period, we'll put the patient on aspirin to decrease the risk of that platelet aggregation. And then we also give it with like MI prophylaxis. So a lot of times you'll see uh, elderly adults taking like a baby aspirin or something like that. The purpose for that is to uh, reduce that risk of them having a heart attack. Okay, so that, that does prevent or that does create some risks because these patients are, are thinning their blood out a little bit. And what can happen is that if this patient were to fall, these elderly patients, if they fall then they're at a much higher risk of bleeding, okay? So therapeutic class is antipyretic and non-opioid analgesic. Its pharmacologic class is salicylate, okay? So here are some nursing considerations that you really need to keep in mind. The first one I want to talk about, and we're going to talk about really briefly, but it's important to know and it's important to teach to all your friends who know you're a nurse and everything like that, is that aspirin can lead to Reyes syndrome most often in, in young children and in infants that are recovering from a viral infection. So upper respiratory infection, chicken pox, things like that. And so a lot of times in the fall, you know, we have these parents who their, their baby has a, a fever, so they start throwing aspirin at them, or their baby's fussy, they start throwing aspirin at them. The risk with that is that there is a connection between aspirin use in young children and Reyes syndrome. And what Reyes syndrome is, it's a life-threatening disorder that can affect the brain and the liver. Okay, and, and in the worst cases, it can lead to death within hours. Okay, so if the patient becomes, if the baby becomes more somnolent, uh, vomiting, things like that, that could be indication that, of Reyes syndrome. They need to rush them to the ED immediately. Okay, so there is an association between Reyes syndrome and aspirin use, especially in patients that are overcoming a viral infection, things like upper respiratory infection, chicken pox, and things like that. So you also want to use, like we said, caution with bleeding disorders. So if the patient has thrombocytopenia, you know, low platelets or something like that, or uh, hemorrhagic stroke, anything like that, you'd want to really use caution with this or chronic alcohol use as this is going to affect the liver. This can also lead to Stevens-Johnson syndrome, which is kind of that skin disorder where we start like seeing the skin sloughing off of the of the body actually. And, it, and so that can actually lead to that. So we'd want to watch for any sort of rashes or anything like that can lead to laryngeal edema and anaphylaxis. Like we said, again, I really want to stress this is that it increases the risk for bleeding with warfarin, heparin, and clopidogrel. Okay, so we really want to be very closely monitoring our patient for any signs of bleeding, petechiae, um, any sort of spots on the stomach, uh, bleeding in the sclera, things like that that would indicate that the patient may be bleeding. We're going to be new bruising, anything like that increased risk for GI bleeding with NSAID use. So NSAIDs already lead to the risk for GI bleeding, but if we throw aspirin on top of an NSAID, then we have an increased risk for that bleeding. And then also alcohol use with aspirin can increase the risk for GI bleeding. So big things to keep in mind here are Reyes syndrome, bleeding, and those are really what you're going to keep in mind. That's what you're going to be tested on. That's what you're going to see. And that's what you need to, to be vigilant for as a nurse. of the Med Master Podcast brought to you by medmastercourse.com and nrsng.com. My name is John Haas, RN, CCRN, student nurse mentor, and your biggest fan. If you're ready to demolish nursing pharmacology once and for all, head over to medmastercourse.com and use the coupon code PODCAST to save 15% on lifetime membership to MedMaster Course. MedMaster Course is packed full of 30 plus hours of HD video and audio content with tons and tons of free cheat sheets and downloads. 
demolish nursing pharmacology, never guess a med again, go to medmastercourse.com, coupon code podcast. You guys know what time it is now. Go out and do something great. Happy nursing. Thank you.